Hello, hello, hello. Welcome now, Stock Trades. In this video, we're going to do something different. You know, I've been planning to do this video for such a long time, but it's just like when I'm saying planning, I planned this like four months ago. But the thing is, like, this requires a lot of work. And I had some time today. It was right after uh, the exam I had for another licensing exam uh, for the passage on my way towards becoming a physician. So, in this video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about top semiconductor stocks. Now, if you've been following our stock alerts and mastering stock market course, then you've been seeing these stocks within our price targets. And in, in, in the coming months, in fact, last month, we've hit our price targets and we've made a considerable amount of money. So we're going to go in and we're going to show a, um, kind of our progress and uh, these are no longer part of our uh, stocks on um, price target lists unless uh, they drop in value and then we will pick them back up. But overall, we're going to show you uh, the three stocks we hit and then we're going to show you the stocks that we've added to our list with the due diligence that we've been doing here at our stock trades. Now, here uh, back on uh, November 14 of 2022 at exactly 1021 p.m. Yeah, I'm a night owl. I work hard Friday. Uh, like more than six months ago, um, we set a price target on a tower semiconductor and we updated it and we've increased our price target and our price target was $45. Now, great news, you know, literally a month right after, um, semi, uh, sorry, uh, tower semiconductor uh, fell into acquisition and it was purchased by, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, was it Intel or something? And the stock shot up to its intrinsic value, and we made a great forty percent return on our investment. Now, I'm so this is you know that's it. It's done. I on uh, February fifteen, I said, hey, this is why we win. People sleep, we eat. T T S E M hit our price target, uh, and um, and I said I need to analyze it to see if we're good. Then I said, nope, you're good. Uh, in, oh, there it is. Intel, you can hold and have Intel pay you a little more. But all stock trades, we designate a sell. Great. So this is done. This is great. Now I put the financials here to basically, you know, help you see a common theme. And what does a successful company look like? Well, as you can see, if you look at the revenues. The revenues are increasing. Gross margins are increasing. Uh, income is one from negative to positive. You got shares, and they're not diluting heavy. Book value went from seven to fifteen, meaning that's that's really good, right? Uh, free cash flow, negative 29 to 211 million. And then uh, working capital increased as well. So obviously this is a very great company, okay? Now, why am I talking about semiconductors? Why am I confident in them? Well, because, you know, California is about to engage 2030, 2035, that all vehicles are basically needing to essentially be electric. And that requires a lot of semiconductor chips. Likewise, we already know that in the long run with China's, you know, uh, uh, new economy that they're building, themselves, the former president was just literally escorted away from the uh, 20th anniversary China meeting or whatever they have. You know, I'm not a really Chinese politician, but this is a new era in the Chinese Communist Party. I mean, the guy was literally the former president. He was literally escorted. Um, United States with NVIDIA and other chip plays, we've been down regulating and trying to destabilize China's ability to go into artificial intelligence and deep neural network learning, which is very important um, uh, uh, which is very important to essentially uh, um, slowing them down because whoever controls the, the semiconductor chip plays is essentially going to control the fourth industrial revolution. Okay, so there's that. Just a quick thing. Where do we um, find that on the site? So this here that you see, um, we are going to be adding it in a very usable Excel format. To, uh, it's going to be under beta test in the brain machine. So this will be the capability of brain machine. I'm bringing this to you guys. It has been, it's been literally six months. I've been working on it, uh, but we are going to release it to you soon. Um, there's still some bugs I'm trying to fix, but uh, expect to have a limited access to that. I believe you're a lifetime. So get, get ready uh, to enjoy that. Uh, I've been literally working nonstop for it. Um, I, but I think by November 1st, uh, fingers crossed. So here's another. So there's TSEM on again, January 14. Uh, we went ahead, set a price target of 68. Yep, it reached it. Uh, literally last month, September 21st, I said, Hey, congratulations. Uh, we basically hit our price target. Congratulations. This has been up 42% in the year. 
And this was up 33% in the year. So obviously you can see that there's always a bull market somewhere, right? Uh, it sounds like Jim Kramer. And I'm going to help you find it, right? <laughs> so this guy's hilarious. I don't know how he comes up with these things. But as you can see, there's always a bull market somewhere. And its ability as the investor to look and understand the fundamentals, it is all about the fundamentals. Whoever tells you that's not about the fundamentals is lying to you, is not an investor, is a speculator. So as again, revenues are increasing, gross margins are increasing, net income is increasing. Shares minimally diluted. Book value is increasing. Free cash flow is increasing. Working capital is doing great. As you can see, you can see a common theme in this. Are you starting to see a common theme? Okay. Last stock here, and then we're going to go to the new ones. Uh, we got PI Manufacturing Radio Frequency. Uh, this is, going, this is July, again, Jan January 14. I kind of lumped them up. This one hit our price target of $95. I said, uh, uh, it, oh no, I said it jumped near our price target. But again, it's close enough. 54% up on the year. Again, if you look at the revenues, it's increasing gross margins, um, you know, above 50%, which is great. Net income, still negative, still negative. But if you look at free cash flow, the free cash flow is negative as well. But if you look at the shares, minimally diluted. And I believe uh, working capital is where the magic is at, 10 million to 214. So this is another example of a company that's negative free cash flow, sorry, negative free cash flow and negative net income, but yet still arrives to our price target because the market assesses its value because of the gross margins, which is why if you go ahead and connect Clover Health, Andrew Toy talked about how we're going to focus, oh, no, sorry, Vivek talked about how we're going to basically fix our margins because once you go ahead and see the margins start to uplift, then you can automatically assume that potentially, 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 this company is and will be having a great business model. All right, next one, uh, SITM. Again, this is the next couple of stocks are the ones that we're going to be setting price targets on. I updated uh, um, our family uh, on um, how the price targets are going to look like. Let me go ahead and show you here. I put them up on the community uh, page here. So overall, this is how the price targets are going to look like. They're going to be the name of the sector, the ticker, the description, the price targets, the bull base Bayer recession, star ratings. So three stars is going to be like, oh, okay, there's something wrong with the net income, free cash flow. Five stars is just, this is perfect. And then legendary investors are basically the investors I point out, pointed out with the CIK numbers if they're top institutional investors. And we're going to put that there. So it's all going to be there for you. And these are some tips we're going to keep adding towards to help you essentially identify how to find companies like this and how to win in the stock market. Okay. Now, Applied, oh yeah, let me go back here. Again, revenue is going up, gross margins, net income uh, here is uh, went from negative to positive. That's why it's on my radar. Uh, shares, again, minimally dilute, diluted. Uh, book value, look at this book value, $1 to 32 freaking dollars. Oh my God, that's really good. Free cash flow here, again, negative to positive. Again, see that you see the maneuver here? Applied materials. Uh, a lot of the folks on our Mastering Stock Market course, uh, they actually did some stock screener tools and they find found this stock. Good job. Exactly. So you got the revenue. Revenue is increasing. Gross margins are increasing. Net income is increasing. Dividends are great. But then you have to look at the payout ratio, which we'll teach. Whenever you see a payout ratio that's extremely high, then you want to say, how are they financing this payout ratio with the dividends? Is it through debt? And if it is, you got to be careful. Okay. Sometimes they can be successful by doing that like ExxonMobil did. But again, they got lucky with the Putin war, okay? Now, book value, $5 to $13. Free cash flow here, again, from 1000 to $1.6 billion to $4.9 billion. Again, a, and this other semi, these are all semiconductors. These are top semiconductors. AMBA, again, $121 million to $354 million over the past 10 years. Gross margins has been up 50%. In fact, above 60% here. Net income. Went from 18 to negative 43 million. Okay, why did it do this? So the questions I'm going to ask when I analyze this company is why? Why did it do this? Are they investing more? What are they investing in? What is the output of their investment going to be? The last time they did something like this, what, 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 what's going to happen to this? Shares 14 to 38. Okay, some dilution here, but overall constant in the past five years. Uh, book value 8 to 15. Okay, they are providing value towards the share. Free cash flow, 9 to 48. Something's cooking in this, especially if you look at their working capital. That's why it's on this list. Okay, Marvell. Okay, so I was at the Henry in Scottsdale. I was studying there because uh, my future wife, she essentially loves to uh, um, be in that area. 
there was a chartered financial analyst, the creme de la creme of Wall Street. And I was talking to him. And I was like, hey, by the way, have you ever heard of Marvel Technology? He said, hey, for you to know that company, you are in the top 1% of, of Wall Street analysts because that is a really good company. And I concur. It really is. We've been having it on our price target. It hasn't ascended to its price target, which is amazing. If you go ahead and it has a star here, which means that a legendary investor by the name of Thomas Gardner, he per he has this in his portfolio. Okay, okay. So we got about three billion to uh, four uh, five point five billion. Gross margins are fifty percent. Fifty percent here. Net income is three hundred three. Okay, net income has been stagnant. Okay, shares are uh, minimally diluted. But there are some dilutions. Book value went to 8 to 18. Free cash flow here is from 626 to 897. So as you can see here, guys, um, this company, there's some, it's a little hit, hit or miss because if you look at the working capital, there's something going on. So I want to look at the free cash flow. I want to dig dive deep into it. But the intrinsic value, I've done it before. It looked really good. We're going to continue following this company and we're going to do another intrinsic value and put in our price target list. But this is definitely one of those winning stocks. All right, Nova, again, 96 to 500, $510 million. Gross margins are great. Net income, look at that net income. It's beautiful. Shares, minimally diluted. Book value for the 18.21. Working capital going in the right direction. Then we have NVTS. Again, look at this one. This one, th These ones are a little fun. All right, two to 28 million. It's growing under the radar. Net income, still negative. Free cash flow. Still negative, a little smaller than Clover Health, but you can see the story continues. Okay, now this is another one. This is another one. This one, this one, I think is going to give you those 400 to 800 percent returns, most like 500. We'll see again. Revenue 1 million to 10 million, but look at the gross margins 60 to 71 percent. Working capital now it's positive. Free cash flow, we're slowly trucking up. Net income and, 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 and free cash flow needs to be positive, but they're investing. And how do I know they're a good business? Because look at their gross margins. See that? Literally for every dollar they make, they get to keep 71 cents. So we're waiting on this to become free cash flow positive, net income positive. That's why the market has been heavily neglecting this. And this is not really on the radar a lot. Okay, most people don't talk about the stocks. Again, um, you know, I usually... I do this in the Al Stock Alerts component. I just wanted to share with the YouTube community that there's other opportunities out there, okay? It's not just, you know, all the meme stocks, right? There's other great companies out there that that, that, that help you build wealth, okay? We're going to look at this one. We're going to do intrinsic value, and we're going to go ahead and pop it into our bi-monthlies and uh, talk about them too. All right, VICR, another one. Look at that, two, 219, three, 366. Again, gross margins, revenue, stable. But look at that net in, income here, negative 14 to 38 million. Look at shares, minimally diluted. Book value, 4 to $10. Look at that. Free cash flow, 10 Again, still negative. Why are they negative? But still, they're getting the same amount of revenue, but now they're becoming, pop, they're now becoming profitable. Why? Because the gross margins are kicking in. Why? Because the working capital is increasing. See that? See the pattern there? AVGO, another popular one. Very, very great company. $2.3 billion to $31 billion. Look at that. Okay, obviously the market has, has rewarded this one. But imagine doing the same maneuvers and catching this company here when the net income was slowly increasing here. Book value is growing up to 18. Again, other companies that we've seen here, our book value is 10 near where AVGO is. But if you look at the book value now, it's 51. Now, let's give you kind of an, under, give you kind of an understanding. If you look up the AV, AVGO stock, it's a $449 stock, $190 billion stock. Again, I'm showing you companies that are successful. And this is obviously, it's going to be end, it's going to end up becoming a $600 to $700 company. In fact, what we can do here is we'll take a quick diversion and we will go here and we'll go to our brain machine and we'll open up the help menu. And let's see what analysts are thinking. Let's go to price target and let's look at the price target consensus of AVGO. So let's see what people think. So yeah, look at that. So the consensus here, so the median is two, 682. The consensus is 681. The target low is 580. And it's it's under the target low. And the target high is 775. So obviously you can see there's juice in this company. And it's not like it hasn't touched those before it has. Okay. So make sure you utilize this because 
you normally people pay a lot of money for this to get um uh to get price target of uh companies of sorry analysts uh, tip ranks unfortunately they you know they charge a lot but we get that data uh let's uh show you kind of an understanding here if you go fg f a v g o you could see the analyst uh uh the analyst company rolls and blound and you can see the price target here these are the price target of different companies loop capital uh and you can find exactly what you know who published it you can click on this and it'll take you to the publishing link where it kind of gives you uh the article where they initiated its price target again we're trying to give retail an upper hand here by putting and ev putting everything in streamlining it uh, if you go back to the price targets here you can look at um the summary here there's different ways of looking at it you can and you know we you can say last quarter we got five targets to average uh uh Price targets five ninety four. We got last average last year six six sixty six fifty seven. So you can look at it and do your due diligence there, and then follow it up with a intrinsic value calculation from the mastering. But if you want, we can do a quick one here. See what is our yeah. So our our average leverage uh, uh, calculator here, which does it automatically, it shows it worth at five hundred and seventy two dollars, which. Um, is the target low if you remember it's around 570 so even then that is showing you it's undervalued so i hope that was a great exercise all right moving backwards all right so another one acls again 200 million all the way up to 800 million look at that look at look look beautiful look that's beautiful gross margins 28 to 44 net income negative 34 to 149 back to positivity book value 6 to 17 free cash flow negative 11 to 124 Working capital, 145 to 527. Guys, this is a great one. I mean, you could just look at it right there. Okay. So let's take a look at this company here. So 1.8 billion. You look at it over the year, it's up 12%, beating the market this year, but year to date, it's still low. You look at it, and obviously it's been, you know, it's it's been rewarded. But the question is, is is it a success? Can it be can it be a success? And most recently here, we do have it being positive. So, you, you know, you can see a change in slope here. If we were to graph this free cash flow, you can see you go from negative 26, 62, 141. You can see that big increase right there. And the question is, Wall Street takes time to notice these things. There's a hundred, lots of stocks out there. And Wall Street's not just invested in the U.S. market. They're invested in China, India, Israel, Europe, right? So it's a perk for us that we have access to this data to learn this information and we have the time to go ahead and sit down and work, okay? Again, ACMR, 31 to 309, gross margins, earnings for shares, great, net income's positive now, free cash flow, still in the negative, figure out why are they investing, what's going on, but look at working capital, 7 million to 648 million. And once we do all this, we're gonna streamline this, we take this, you know, we did a great, we did our fundamental uh, visual analysis. Now we're going to do our fundamental mathematical analysis. And once we go in and do that, then we pick our, the strongest ones, right? And then for me, how I like to do is I like to pick kind of a little ETF that I create, my own ETF, right? And, and uh, obviously it's not a licensed ETF, it's just my own little personal thing. I have my, 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 my account and instead of buying an ETF that has all the semiconductors, which, you know, some of them are losers, right? So, you know, there's a lot of opportunity out there. I gave you a lot of information right now. I just kind of like, you know, put a lot in there. Uh, any questions? Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, what's that? Nephron, Nephron Club Walgreens. What's that? Nephron is like the kidney. Read the glomerulus. That was a lot, guys. Holy freaking moly. Whew, my mouth is dry. Anywho, uh, I wanted to add uh, to some folks. Uh, if you like cold brew, um, there's this recipe that I've been doing. Uh, you take uh, a French press. And this is like, like so random, but like it's what I'm drinking here. You take cold brew. Okay. So you take the coffee, beans, you grind them up coarse. You take it and you put it in a large French press. Okay. Then you put the beans in there. Okay. 
And then from there, you put room temperature water, room temperature, and you let it sit for 24 hours, okay? And then you press it the next day. You pour it into a cheese filtered cloth into like a mason jar or something. And you close that up and you put it in the fridge and you have amazing, amazing cold brew. Literally from the gods, okay? So delicious. It, and it's not bitter. It's smooth because you're using room temperature water. Whenever you do heat, you extract the acidity from the beans. I know that was random, but I, I, I just like, I, I just started the recipe and it's just, uh, my life has gotten so much better, <laughs> especially at the hospital where I just love that. You know, after, you know, I feel like a machine, you know, because it's such a good, uh, good boost of energy. Mm. Overall, that's all I have for you guys here for uh, our um, uh, semi top semiconductor plays. Uh, we're going to go ahead, do our intrinsic value calculations on them. And uh, I did a lot of due diligence on these companies. These companies have been strategically picked. And you can see each company is at a different stage of life. Okay? And I believe that we are in a beginning S-shape curve of the tech sector. Uh, I'm going to say this right now. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, I watched an interview of him from The Verge, which I would honestly love to just kind of comment on and, and talk about. There was only 120. The Verge has 3 million subscribers. And within that, only 121,000 people watched this interview of Mark Zuckerberg. And it's one of the best interviews ever because it talks about like, uh, uh, you know, it shows him as a human. And, you know, even Mark Zuckerberg, who's a software fanatic, is building hardware because the hardware doesn't exist for what world we are going to experience. Whenever, like when I'm talking to you right now, I try to imagine myself that I'm with you, right? But there's always this barrier between the camera and the screen, and what Mark Zuckerberg's trying to fix is creating an immersive experience where we are in a world that is either the metaverse or the physical world where we are able to bring our holographic self with inside your world and come together and be able to have a cohesive meeting. See, a lot of our mastering students, and there's a reason why I created it with Beta Access, there's a hidden agenda and hidden curriculum within the mastering course that, again, I think they're slowly catching on. And some of you got the message. Many of you, by the time you finish everything, the course has been outlined, every, all that's been done, and the experience has been in your mind. We're going to get to a point. We're going to come together. And we are going to be such a strong team where one person or two people, whatever, of the group is going to look at semiconductors, healthcare, X, Y, and Z. Some people are going to like other sectors and they just want to deal with those sectors. And we come together and then the best way to do it is, I believe, in this immersive metaversal experience so that a person from Israel is able to to put on their goggles or glasses, whatever the future of the metaverse is holding, and be able to come together in a conference room where we're all sitting together, talking, and having sharing a screen we, above our heads where we can all look at other people's stocks and, and, and seek different conversations and be immersed within this experience. And I believe the learning curve and the synaptic connectivity in our minds will it will just be such a steep learning curve that will allow us to really have a competitive advantage in the stock market um the beautiful part is we have no clients to please because we're all just individual investors but we have resources as that of what hedge funds have and we can use this to give us an advantage over the sweat some you know retail investors that unfortunately are flying blind okay so uh 
it's going to i have a very great vision for this and uh i'm 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 i'm, I'm so excited uh to be able to share this uh with uh, uh the people that are inside our uh group here and it's uh, it is it is it is going to be so it is going to be so fun it is going to be so fun we're going to we're going to have a great time uh love each and every one of you guys and i'll see you in the next one